Hello, um, I'm Mary. I'm going to uh, live code a to-do list app um, to demonstrate some of the uh, developer skills that we think are important at Makers. Um, that's skills like TDD, uh, red-green refactor, uh, object-oriented code design, um, and, and domain modeling, uh, and, and debugging by tightening a loop and getting visibility. Um, it's going to be a very simple uh, to-do list app, uh, so it's just a few user stories. Um, so as a user, so I can remember the things I need to do, I want to be able to create a to-do. Um, and as a user, so I can keep track of the things I've done, I want to be able to mark a to-do as complete. Um, and as a user, so I can see what I need to do, I want to be able to print out all my to-dos. So kind of pretty vague uh, user stories, but hopefully enough to, to get going with. Um, now, kind of just to start thinking about this, then I guess what I'd start doing probably is thinking about the, the user interface, possibly, or maybe think about the domain model, but I'll think about the user interface first. So we can, it's going to be at a command line prompt, so there'll be something like this, and then let's say start with creating a to-do, then maybe the user could just be able to type new and then get milk or something like that. Feels okay. Um, and then for setting a to-do as complete, then I guess... Um, I guess they'll need a way to tell the app which to do they're talking about. So if we think about print for a second, then maybe print could print out like get milk um, with and print out all the to do's with numbers. So we've got get milk and then, oh, I don't know, uh, walk the dog and things like that. Um, so with that, then they'd be able to say something like complete uh, to do number one, which would tick off get milk. Uh, so that feels okay as a, pl as a place to start, I guess. Um, so now I'll kind of think about a, a domain model. Um, I should just leave that there. Um, now, for a domain model, then I think, I think I'll start by uh, gathering some verbs and nouns and stuff like that. So those can come from the user stories. So we've got uh, created to do, uh, and we've got uh, complete uh, to do, and we've got print uh, all to do's. Um, so that feels that feels pretty okay. Um, so I guess we've sent, feels like we've got a to, some sort of to do uh, class coming out here, some sort of to do object, um, and then some sort of way of, of, of gathering all of those to do's together. So that'll do fine now. Now and printing, I guess. Uh, I guess can go on to do somehow. Maybe that'll to do is I'll get a print message, that feels a bit weird, uh, maybe we'll come back to that I suppose. Um, cool, but that's definitely enough to start sketching out a domain model, so uh, normally I'd use um, a pen, pen and paper for this, cause it's so it's much faster, but um, for this I'm just going to use uh, Acorn, the image editor, which will be a little slow, but basically we'll, I think we should be able to get the idea. So we had um, a some sort of to-do class, um, and then we had a, well let's say to-dos maybe over there, um, and then some sort of to-do class, um, and then let's sketch in those messages. So we've got, um, I guess, uh, somehow we're going to have probably to-dos, create, uh, call new on to-do. Um, so that's okay. So we've got a new message there. Um, and then we've got some sort of complete message going on, um, so that's going to be like that. Oops. Okay. Um, and then we've got, I guess, some way of sending a create message to to do so that it can keep track of what where the to do that was created is be to be stored. So we've got something like create um, cool. And I feel a bit I, mm, unclear how to do is going to figure out which or to do is going to figure out which uh, to do to complete. But maybe we'll come back to that in a second. Um, cool, but that's definitely enough to, to start off with. Um, so I've got my uh, command line over here, so I just created a 
a folder for this already um, called uh, to do's um, and it's just got that readme in it so that feels cool all right so I'll start with the test uh, so let's in it this with our spec stuff um, and then great okay so we've got no examples fantastic cool um, so let's uh, create um, oh I don't know start with to do um, so we want to be able to just ju jumping back to the user stories then let's just start with really nice creating a to do um, so we're going to say describe to do um, so it uh, creates a to do. Um, so let's describe the new method. Cool. Um, let's just run our test, see what we're up to. Okay, great. So we've got no constant to do. All right, great. Well, let's, uh, let's fix that first of all jumped ahead of ourselves a little bit there. Cool, great. Okay, so let's fix that problem. Um, okay, so hopefully that's... Um, okay, no, we need to go ahead and require that. Um, Sweet. Okay, cool. So let's bring back that um, test. Um, so we wanna, when we create a new to-do, we want to create a new to-do. So we've got, uh, let's say, subject um, to-do dot new. And we've got expect to do great let's run that all right nice so we can create a new to do so that feels great cool so first, first user story done um, all right let's have a look at the user stories again um, I guess uh, Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, let's uh, let's say we want to be able to create a get milk to do or something like that. Uh, so let's be a bit more specific. So um, it is with the past uh, text or something like that. Okay. Cool. So we need to be a bit more specific here. So we'll say I don't know get milk or something like that. Um, and then we say we want a uh, subject to uh, dot uh, text to equal uh, get milk. Let's let something here. Okay, cool. So this should fail now. Great. Cool. So it's saying wrong number of arguments. Uh, we was given one, but it expected zero, which totally makes sense because our to do, oops, our to do file has no initialize function, so initialize is expecting one argument. So we'll say uh, text here, uh, and then we'll just save that uh, away. Okay, great. Now that's not going to be enough, I'm going to guess, because um, it's still not going to be able to grab that back. So it says undefined method text for to do there. So it's saying like, oh god, you can't call text on that, which totally makes sense because text is a private instance variable. So let's make an uh, at a uh, reader for that. Um, there we are. 
and this is going to pass. That's nice. Cool. So we can create the to do with the past text, which feels closer to that first user story. Um, let's not worry too much about filling out the the complete completing a to do user story. Um, let's try and get something where we've got a nice user interface up and running, um, just to kind of test that end to end stuff. So um, it feels like our domain model is uh, a bit inadequate now because it's like we've got this magic kind of create thing coming coming from coming from nowhere. Um, so let's kind of write the code that we that we wish we had. So we want to be able to say something like um, I don't know new and then get milk or something like that. And then I guess we'd expect somehow uh, to do dot new to get run with get milk. Um, but we also want to add that to the list of to dos. Um, so we're going to need to store that to do somewhere. So it's time to create to dos, I think. So I feel like we need some sort of interface here to to do. So we've got in the domain model, we've got that just creating the getting the create message, which feels okay actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we've got uh, to do spec, um, and let's say oops, I want to describe. Um, let's just check if that fails. Okay, nice. It's never heard of to do, so let's go and fix that problem. Okay, perfect. Now we're back to to do spec, and that's not going to work because we need to require to do's. Cool. Okay, great. So that's that's sort of running. Um, so what do we want to be able to do here? We want to be able to say uh, we want to describe the uh, create. Let's say the create uh, create function uh, method. And we want to say it sure it creates a new and stores a new ooh, stores a new to do. So I was just asking about one thing there. Um, cool. Now we've got a bit of a pick, bit of a problem here because it's going to be hard to test exactly um, whether it's stored the to do. So I guess we'll have to kind of think about that. But let's think about the interface first of all. So we want to be able to say to do dot new um, like that, and we want to be able to say to do dot create uh, with something like get milk or whatever. Um, so we won't worry about all any of that new stuff yet. Um, we'll just assume that it's already parsed out the text. Um, so, that, so that feels pretty good. Um, uh, now, how are we going to test that? We're going to have to say something like expect to do's dot to uh, whoops uh, dot to do uh, let's say ooh, items or mm, that feels a bit weird. Uh, dot list uh, actually let's be super clear to do's dot to do's feels a bit weird but um, we'll go with that for now um, to be um, uh, to be actually let's do uh, to do's dot to do's and then grab the thing and then grab the text and then just check that for a nice easy check um, so that should be get milk. Cool. Okay, so let's run that test again. Um, so now we've got uh, create is still undefined. So that feels good. Um, so let's let's write that code to make that make that test pass. Um, so we've got to do's. Um, so I, when we want to when we initialize. Um, then we want something like uh, to do is some sort of empty array. Um, that feels good. Uh, and then we've got well, actually, let's just check that first. 
Um, so let's get rid of this test for now. Oops. Um, and let's just check that it gets initialized with no to-dos at all. So we'll say uh, describe new so it is initialized with no to do's Okay, um, so that's going to fail because of the um, to do's is not accessible, so let's solve that problem. Cool, so that feels good. Now let's bring back this test and uh, focus back on it. Cool, so we've still got a create problem, so we're going to go back and make a create method. Um, so we want to somehow say something like to do dot new with the text. Um, so that feels good, and then we want to pop that into to do's. So that's nice. I um, feel like we might want to inject that. Um, Yeah, let's let's see how that feels for now. Oops. Okay, great. Undefined method for B on line to do spec line sixteen. Okay, fair enough. So we've got line sixteen. Great. Cool, so that feels good. Um, so we're going to create a to do. Um, maybe on balance, we'll figure out that injection thing right away. Um, so let's say that create should take uh, the to do class. Um, and then we'll say um, we need the to do's double, so we'll say oops. Silly to inject that now. Let's inject that later, right at the beginning. Cool. So we've injected to do class into the to dos when it's created, which can either so to do class can either be a double or it can be the for reals to do class. Um, so let's get rid of that require to do. Don't need that anymore. Um, and now let's inject this to do class double when we create the to dos instance. And so now that will break because. There's no method new, but now we can test this in a nicer way. Um, cool. So let's fix that, fix that. So we need to say um, 
need to fix that first test where it says, hey, the wrong number of arguments is uh, was given to here. Let's fix that by just saying to do class. So inject that. So that solves that problem. Check that test now passes. Great. Now we're down to just this one test, and we're saying, hey, I received an unexpected message new on the double, which totally makes sense. And now we can s separate these uh, units much more nicely. So we can say that we just expect uh, to do oh, to do class dot to receive the new message um, with uh, I guess get milk. And now all of that weirdness kind of goes away. Okay. Um, so received unexpected message new with get milk. Ah, yes, because I didn't set the expectation before I actually did the test. Great. Okay, cool. So we're on the way. Right, so now let's just tidy this up a little bit now that we've, now that we've refactored. Um, so let's just say that the uh, new text is um, get milk hey uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a screencast in fact um, do you need this room oh shit <laughs> wow. All good. Well, yeah. that's that's an hour you've got back. See you. See you. Uh, cool. So with to do text, and then okay. So that feels pretty nice. Great. Okay. So that's all passing. Um, now, so we've we've got to green, and we've we've done a little bit of refactoring. Um, I am sort of unhappy with this to do's dot to do's business. Um, it feels like a kind of weird to say to do's dot to do's, uh, but probably much more importantly, it feels weird that we're going to have to do something like uh, to do's dot to do's and then index into there to get some sort of element and then say, hey, give me the text, and that would be something like. Uh, return something like you know get milk or something like that. That feels pretty reachy inny, so um, I'm not totally happy with that. But um, so maybe uh, we'll add a get method, though we don't really need that yet. Um, let's just note that down on the domain model just to just have a think about that. Cool. So I've got. Another possible message here where we've got something like, um, I guess this also comes from, whoops, oh my god. Uh, so we've also got, ah, Yeah, we should take some sort of number like zero or something like that. Oh wait, that's absolute nonsense. Um, that's going to be over here, isn't it? So that'd be something like zero, and let's just fill in a couple more details on that. So it'd be something like get, like you know. Walk, go for a walk or something like that um, and that feels good and then that's going to be with the oops walk or something like that cool all right so we've got that on the domain model, but maybe we'll come back to when we actually need that. Um, great. OK, cool. So let's go back to our user stories to remind ourselves where we are. 
So it feels like I can remember the things I need to do now uh, and I want to be able to create a to-do. Um, and uh, we're not going to worry about completing for now and we're not going to really worry about printing. So let's carry on with that idea of um, that we started with a while ago. We actually want to start to get all the way back to the user interface and getting the user to, 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 to interact with this whole thing somehow. Um, so we know that we're going to get a message, something like new get milk or something like that to create a new to do. So something is going to need to chop that up and it definitely doesn't feel like that is um, to do's is responsibility. So let's create some sort of like, I don't know, like command interface or so, sorry, command class or something like that. Um, so the command class might be doing something like, uh, so we do command dot new, and then that creates gets some sort of text like new get like get milk, um, and then we can do something like dispatch to actually run it, which would call um, end up calling something like um, uh, to do dot create, um, having figured out which thing to call it on. Um, so let's let's give that a bash and see how that feels. Um, cool. So let's add um, the command class, which I guess is going to end up calling create, um, and then that's going to get instantiated by this magical thing. That's probably the sort of top level interface, um, maybe uh, that get something like a new message with something like new get milk or whatever. Um, cool, so command is going to receive that message and then it's going to somehow figure out, oh shoot, we have to send that to the to-dos the to thing. So I guess that, that sort of feels okay. Um, one worry a little bit is that that seems like it might turn into some sort of conditional where it's like, hey, if the command was new, then do this, and if the command was um, complete, then do that, and then that's just gonna that if that conditional is just gonna grow and grow and grow, uh, which feels a bit scary, uh, but maybe is fine for now, and we can maybe figure out that. But this feels like a nice separation to have the command's responsibilities to figure out what code to run based upon the command and to chop up this into into tokens into into little pieces. Um, so let's try and let's try and make that command interface. Uh, uh, so we've got describe command. Let's go through the thing where this breaks. Great, and it says, "Hey, initialize uninitialized constant command." That feels cool. Um, and then let's fix that problem. Okay, that's going to be a problem because we haven't required it. Um, great. And now, so what did we say? We said that command is going to be able to create some text and then call the right thing. So let's just check, just to get ourselves started, that it can just be instantiated. Okay, so we're going to do something like command dot new with uh, a new get milk. So that feels cool. And then we're going to just check that. Oops. Let's just move that to the subject. All right. 
Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem because the command has no initialize method. So again, we're trying to pass it an argument, but uh, command is not expecting one. It's initialize method. So let's go ahead and whoops, uh, say, I don't know, command something text. Uh, so I sort of want to save that, but sort of want to not. Because my sort of intuition is that that dispatch idea is actually kind of redundant. Um, and that really we just want to create a command with some text and have that be automatically dispatching the command to actually run it. So let's kind of go with that intuition and just say, hey, we're not going to bother saving the command text. So this should now pass. Great. Cool. So now we want to actually uh, be able to dispatch a command. So uh, so it is uh, it uh, runs. Um, so actually, let's let's make a new describe block here. So actually, this is actually going to run a thing, so that feels a little weird. Let's actually just update this test to say, hey, we don't want it just to instantiate. We want it to say, describe running a command. So we'll say it can run the create command. And let's rename this idea to create get milk to make that a little more uh, yeah parallel good okay uh, so that should still be fine um, uh, now though we want to this is where all the setup stuff happens so let's go back to our domain model so um, we've got a command that we probably want to give it the object that it runs its commands on so that's going to be the to do's object so we can instantiate command with a to do's object um, cool okay so let's update this and let's say that's going to be to do's and then an actual command cool so this is kind of feeling more and more like something that we never instantiate. But let's just again leave that, leave that as it is. So cool. So that takes that takes the, the to do's object. So now we want to update that. So we're going to have to create a, a, a double. All right. So. That should do that, and then we pass those to dos into there uh, into create get milk. Great, and so if that code should now be testable again, so that's great. So, undefined method to dos, interesting. Line six. Um, oh, whoops, what a silly sausage. All right, great. So that's now going to pass because we've given it two arguments now, and it is expecting only one. So back to the command. So we're going to say uh, oops, to do's. There we are, and that should be passing again. Great. Cool. So now that command has got some to do's to actually run its command on, and I guess it can do some maybe do some chopping up of, of things. So I'm going to have to, given this is going to be private, we'll probably run this. Uh, develop this without um, well actually let's write let's write the dispatch code first um, okay so that's definitely going to be private um, cool so we need to update our test first before writing that code Okay, so that's now that's now wrong. So we're going to expect uh, to do's 
uh, dot to receive, um, I guess, create um, with uh, get milk. I guess, because that, let's just sketch that out, so we're going to be like, hey, to-dos, well, somehow, just, you know, uh, if command text is, starts with new, um, then uh, we want to say to-dos dot create, or starts with uh, create, that is, uh, to do is dot create passing in uh, rest of text or something like that. Okay, cool. Um, and then it's going to avoid any others. Okay, cool. So that, that feels fine. So we're just going to expect uh, to do, sorry, we're going to expect to do is dot create to receive the rest of the text, which is going to be something like get yeah, milk. Cool. So let's get rid of that spike. Um, okay, so that, that test feels reasonable at the moment. Um, good, so it expected one time with the arguments get milk to uh, call create, but it's got zero times, which totally makes sense because we haven't written that code yet. Um, so I wonder if we're going to be able to do this still with a subject. I'm going to guess maybe not. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to be able to um, actually, yeah, let's fix that. Okay, so let's put that expectation first. Great. Okay, test should still fail. Great. All right, so here we go. So we're going to create this dispatch method, uh, which takes the command text, um, and uh, let's say it takes the command, just the command string or something like that, the command name, I guess, um, and it just says something like, hey, if command name is equal to create, then go ahead and call to do whoops okay so that feels good i guess now we need some sort of like uh, split into command and rest for the command text. So we're going to say something like, um, well, let's, let's play around an IRB for this one. So we've got like uh, create get milk. And we want to say split, which splits it into the things. Okay, so we can say grab the first element for the thing, and we can grab the rest of the elements. Does Ruby have rest? No, it does not. Okay, so I just looked up this uh, cool uh, method on a string called uh, partition. Um, that the way it works is you can pass in a thing that you want to partition a string on. And, um, so, for example, I'm passing in a um, a space here, and it just essentially gives you back an array um, that has the stuff before the partition on uh, in the first element, and then the partitioned item in the second, uh, just there, um, and then the stuff after the partition. In the in the third element, so, so that's pretty cool. Um, so I think that'll do it for us. Um, so I can say, um, uh, shit, this feels a bit weird. Let's just say um, command name or something like that, and that's going to pass back um, 
part two. Oops. Uh, command text dot partition. Um, on that, um, and now we can say um, just to get ourselves started, we can say uh, command name, command text like that. Cool. Um, and then we can say um, oops, that's going to be the first element, I guess. Um, and we've got command text. Oops, uh, rest of command. Which is going to be basically the same. So it's being a bit weird, but hopefully it's okay. For now, that's why we get to green. Um, so that's the command text, and then everything passed back. So now rest of command can also take command text like that. Cool. So let's just run our test and see where we're up to. All right. So we're still getting nothing. Okay, that's that's great because we're not actually calling dispatch here. Um, so we'll want to pass in. Uh, to do's is to do's, and then we want to call dispatch, passing in the command text like that. All right, great. So we're, we're back at green. So this is feeling a little weird. This code. Um, uh, first of all, um, it feels like there may be another class here uh, to deal with this stuff. Um, we've also got some slightly weird um, duplication here. Um, so let's let's figure out the duplication first of all. So um, let's say uh, command and rest of command. So we'll just take that. So this is definitely feeling like a another little class here, but um, maybe we'll we'll save that that refactor for later. Um, cool. And then this feels sort of okay. Um, yeah. Um, let's just make it a little clearer by saying. Um, actually, that feels okay. Cool. It might be worth at some point in the future refactoring this to automatically dispatch on the command name. So, but again, we can probably leave that for later. Cool. So we're at green. Um, let's go back to our tests. So it can run the create command. So that feels that's feeling good. Um, now let's actually try and get this all get this all working together somewhere. So we're going to say um, let's create an app file or something, or a CLI file. So we want to create some to dos. And we also want to create uh, listen for a string. Um, so we're going to say command, and then we're going to say uh, command. Oops, that's, that's going to be command text, um, and then we're going to say command 
uh, to do command text to actually try and run it. So let's just see what we get with that. Cool. Okay, uninitialize constant to do's. Fair enough. So let's require to do's. Oh shoot, no, actually, hold on. Oh, that's no good. Then, great. And we should get, um, okay, wrong number of arguments given in to do's.rb. Okay, fair enough. Because uh, we want to pass in our to do class here. Let's just double check that. Yeah, great. Okay, and then we're gonna go do like create get milk, and then unlistalize comes with command. Great. All right, so it feels like this is moving in the right direction, but we kind of want to create an actual feature test. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. That's pretty high level at the moment, but maybe we'll come back to that. Um, that's it, it creates a to do from the All right, so let's, oops, let's run those tests. Oh, oops, that's silly, because we want to. All right, okay, so that seemed to run okay. And then we want to expect that to do's dot to do's uh, zero. Um, all right, so that seems to work. Cool. Okay, nice. So let's go back to this to do's for a second. This is feeling a little weird. Um, let's say, let's say we want to remove the at a reader on to do's, um, and, uh, then allow this to just have a get method or something like that. Um, so we'll say, uh, get, so let's remove that, and we'll have get, like, uh, index or something like that. Um, and then it just says app to do's index like that. Okay, so oh, that's because our okay, so let's have a look at this. So we've got our features. Well, let's start with the to do spec. So we're on line 10.
Okay, so it's diving straight into to do. So that's not what we want at all. <clears throat> so let's just say instead we could use this new API. And just say, hey, when we get the first one, there should be nothing there. And that should be nil. Okay, great. So that feels really, really nice. That passes now. Um, and then let's also check that feature spec. Let's go have the same problem. So let's say get zero. And there we're good to go. Cool. So that feels a little nicer on the on the to dos there. Now that we've we've kept to dos private, um, so that that's cool. Um, and now let's just jump back to command for a second. Um, so we we said that we we probably want to pull this out to its own class. Um, that I don't know might be called like command parsed command or something like that um, to make this a little to 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 focus this on a single responsibility. Um, and we also said that this code here feels a little bit kind of not ideal because it kind of feels a bit polymorphic uh, because we're using an if statement to basically do a different thing depending on the scenario that feels like a different type of thing, like it feels genuinely like a different type of idea to say I want to create a to-do versus print the to-dos or something like that. But So these are definite things that we've got our eye on for refactoring. Um, but I think I'm just going to gonna leave it there and um, commit this code and, and then um, if you want to of course then you can kind of pick up uh, where I left off um, and uh, develop the rest of the, the user stories. So thanks a lot for watching.